debt is a scary thing. People don't want it. If you say, oh, it's sovereign money that we can create, um, that's much more appealing. I think the the main issue is just whether it actually is any any different functionally. Uh, and we do have a couple more minutes here, and, and Austin wanted to know more about this. Um, so I think um, let if we talk about normal deficit spending, um, two things happen uh, as part of the process of deficit spending. One is that the government uh, issues sovereign money into the economy. They spend money, whether it's toward a basic income or uh, anything else. Uh, and then the second thing they do is they issue treasury securities at the same time. They issue government debt onto the market. Um, so if they only do one of those things, um, then then that's kind of what, what Jeff Crocker is advocating for. Um, just do the part where you spend the money and don't do the part where you are uh, where you're issuing debt onto the market, where you're issuing government debt onto the market. Now, the thing about government debt is that the amount of it that actually ends up on the market is not determined by how much deficit spending there was. It's not determined by how much you know uh, money the government added to the economy. It's determined by the central bank for monetary policy purposes. So you have this, these two things that happen at the same time, and then the, the central bank immediately jumps in and buys up any excess. Uh, and the amount that's left over is the amount that's uh, appropriate for monetary policy, that's appropriate for getting interest rates to where we want them. So in the sovereign money situation, you can imagine that the government uh, spends money into the economy and then the central bank adds the right amount of debt uh, to match that amount of spending to keep the entire economy in balance. And it's not equal to the amount of money that the government spent. It's the, the amount that, that keeps prices stable, that gets interest rates to where you want them to be. Uh, now, in the deficit spending scenario, it's exactly the same thing, except the central bank, bank comes in and takes out the excess. Uh, either way, you end up with the same amount of debt uh, on the market. Uh, so that's kind of, uh, kind of maybe the, simpl the simplest way to think about it, is that in either case, you've got the government spending, and in either case, you end up with the same amount of debt. It's just a matter of what the central bank has to do to get there. Does it buy up the excess or does it put more out onto the market in order to in order to get to the same end point? Um, so and, and then, yeah, go ahead, Austin. I was going to say thanks. That that finally clicked. I get it now. So Derek should take that. But you just didn't make it into one of his little clips that he does on <laughs> CMT because that was really I need to, to to understand it. And how does it work in a, in a real world example? And that really helped. Okay, glad. I'm, I'm glad that, uh, that that helped. 